Hey y'all, it's Kate from The Literary Apothecary, and today we're going to be doing our dog sled vlog that you've all been waiting for. So this was supposed to happen, it was supposed to happen back in like February, and then it got pushed, and then it got pushed again, and then it got pushed once more, but now I'm finally doing it. I don't care what any of my other collabs say, we are doing the dog sled vlog. So first, let me just talk a little bit about what this collab was supposed to be. And it may still come out. I don't know what everyone else is going to be doing with their videos because a lot of people didn't read as many books as they were supposed to or they didn't like their books. So um, I'm going to say what they were supposed to do, but I don't know if they're actually going to do it or not at this point. So this collab was supposed to be with Abby Salter at Abby Salter Books, and she was going to do um, ships. Gregory LaPerch was to do buses. Sharon Dwyer was going to do planes. Mer at Mary Reed's was going to do trains and Charmaine <clears throat> was going to do airships. So I will link all their channels down below. Um, go check them out if you haven't already. They're great. I love them. And hopefully they'll do their videos too so I'm not the only one. But I was just so excited to do dog sleds that I couldn't wait anymore. And I know some of you were very excited about this video so I'm going to there's going to be a little bit of history of the dog sleds in here, a little bit of book reviews, maybe some movie clips, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So first, a little history. Mushing, a sport or transport method powered by dogs. It implies the use of one or more dogs to pull a sled on snow or a rig on dry land. France was the first European power to use the word marsh, which means walk or move, and this slowly became mush. This was used in what was then called New France, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. But the practice of dog sledding dates back to at least 2000 BC and originated in Siberia. It was during the 1500s and 1600s that dog sleds became the ordinary method of transportation during the winter months in New North New France. In 1760, the British Army took control over New France and this became Canada. Marsh became mush. During the Klondike Gold Strike, sled dogs became the most common mode of transportation. Yukon is a dangerous place. You never know what's coming. This has been depicted and immortalized by the Jack London classic Call of the Wild, and now a fantastic movie with Harrison Ford. How do you feel about an adventure? Beyond all maps. We could go. You and I. Where no one's ever been before. 1911, the Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen used sled dogs in a race to become the first person to reach the South Pole. By the time of World War I, mushing had spread to European countries like Norway where dog sleds were used for nature tours, as ambulances in woodlands and mountains, and to bring supplies to soldiers in the field. During 1925 Sarum Run to Nome, 20 mushers and about 150 dog sleds relayed diphtheria, antioxin, 674 miles by dog sled across the then territory of Alaska in 5.5 days, saving Nome and surrounding communities. A young girl has died of diphtheria. It's highly infectious and I have no antitoxin to fight it with. This disease is fatal to children. That's nearly 700 miles. A relay. We station men at every roadhouse along the way. I'll have to go ready. Hi! And this leads us to our first dog sled book review. 
that is The Adventures of Balto by Patricia Cargo. This was a kid's book that I had read growing up, and so I revisited it now as an adult. I gave it three and a half out of five stars. I thought it was a great, a good children middle grade book. It was good and infor very informative, but sometimes it felt like it was too informative for its age range. I felt like we veered away from the main topic a bit and had maybe too many details, like I said, for the target audience. Um, but for nostalgia, and if you want to learn a whole bunch about Balto and that serum run in Gnome, I, and a little tiny bit about the history of dog sledding, um, this was a great book just to get that basic information. And one of the things that Cargo does is she takes all of the legends that surrounded Balto and dismisses them and says this is what really happened. Who knows if her story is even real, but um, that's one of the things that I enjoyed in the adventures of Balto. So let's talk about dog sled racing now. Mushing or dog sled racing today is primarily for sport. It is practiced worldwide, but primarily in North America, Northern Europe, and the Swiss Alps. Bet you didn't know there was two international organizations for dog sled racing. The International Sled Dog Racing Association, ISDRA, and the International Federation of Dog Sle of Sledding Sports are working toward getting Olympic recognition. It is the state sport of Alaska, but the most famous sled dog races in the world are the Finmarsk Club, in Norway, the Iditarod in Alaska, La Grande Odyssey in France and Switzerland, and the Yukon Quest in Alaska and Yukon. Now, dog sled members. We have the lead dogs, which need to be intelligent, take initiative, have common sense, and the ability to find a trail in bad conditions. Our swing dogs or point dogs they swing the rest of the team on curves and turns. Team dogs are the power dogs. They're the dogs with the most strength and they have to pull from both behind and in front. And then our wheeled dogs are the dogs that are nearest the sled. <clears throat> and they must have a calm temperate because that sled is gonna come up at them really fast and strength and steadiness and the ability to guide just the sled itself. This leads us to our second review. I listened to the audiobook, read the audiobook Winter Dance, The Fine Madness of Running the Iditarod by Gary Paulson. And I gave this book three and a half out of five stars. Um, this gives you a lot of the first hand detail. So Gary Paulson first had his dog sleds as kind of a tracking team and I think it was Minnesota. And then he fell in love with uh, mushing and the dogs <coughs> excuse me and <clears throat> then he decided to train for the Iditarod and go and run in it so <clears throat> we see him build his team up and get his team and himself ready for the Iditarod he essentially becomes one of them at one point he goes and he does everything with the dogs he sleeps with the dogs he eats with the dogs he showers with the dogs he runs with the dogs obviously he does everything with the dogs just and then he becomes one of them um to and this was this book was very very intense he holds nothing back so if you are squeamish if you don't like um animal deaths animal cruelty in a sense this is not for you but if you want to learn firsthand what, how to train for the Iditarod what goes on during the Iditarod what goes on during tracking teams this is a great book for that like I said I gave it three and a half out of five stars it was great but not fantastic um, so other forms of dog sled racing so we have the bike joring which is a dog or a team of dogs is attached with a tow line to a bicycle. Often, it's often used to train dogs during off-season. 
we have ski joring, which is a winter sport in which a person on skis is pulled by a horse, dog sled, or motor vehicle. And this was actually used in the Olympics in 1928 with horses. And we have dog scootering. You heard me right. Dog scootering where you use one or more dogs to pull a human riding on a unmotorized kick scooter. And this is actually the techniques of this in all of the um, equipment is actually very similar to mushing. Um, so those are some other forms of dog sledding. Now our last review is for Let There Be Love, which is number one in the sled dog series by Melissa Storm. I gave this three out of five stars and this was a romance, kind of a kind of an em enemies to lovers trope. Um, we have Lauren Delton who is an ex inexperienced musher and like it's revealed that her father is like this famous musher in Alaska during the Iditarod but she didn't know this growing up she her dad died at the beginning of the book and she's on this journey to discover who her dad really was from clues that was left in his office so then Lauren gets hired by the veteran but injured racer Shane Ramsey and um, Shane is another kind of local legend in Alaska and Iditarod and he's been injured and can never race again so he hires Lauren to kind of take over the team and he's famous for his um, rage and temp bad temperament so no one wants to work for him even though he's a legend and I thought it was you know it was a light romance if you're looking for just something fun it was great I often need that pull and emotion so it didn't have that for me um, and there was some kind of holes in it that I've found but overall it was a good just everyday get out of the stress of work type of book. I listened to it on audiobook when I was driving out to my sister's a lot to babysit my nieces and it was it was great for a car drive because you didn't have to pay attention to everything. Um, so that was our dog sled vlog. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Have you read these books? What did you think? Um, what are your favorite dog sled books? What are your favorite dog sled legends? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. As always, my Patreon and Discord information will be in the description below. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back. Bye.